Greetings everybody, this is Road to Recovery. I'm recording outside today, so if you hear the occasional dog barking or bird chirping, it's all part of the background scenery. And today I wanted to take this time to talk about COVID-19, part of the reason I'm outside right now, just trying to enjoy this beautiful day. I know we've all been impacted by COVID-19, but um, there was this article that came across today that I think really speaks to the uh, predominance of stress and anxiety that's in the world, but also to the sicknesses as well. So let's go ahead and read this article. Now, before I start reading this, I just wanted to let you know that the content of this article uh, was featured in other areas uh, by other police commanders. So this is a very common problem that's being presented all within the last month. So let's get to it. This comes from the Seacoast Online, and the title is called Sex Crimes Against Children Tips Tripled During COVID-19, says ICAC Commander. Soon after COVID-19 stay-at-home orders were issued in March, cyber tips to the Portsmouth-based ICAC, that's Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force, tripled, said Detective Josh Periachi, commander of the statewide unit. Charged with finding adults who target children through the Internet, ICAC investigators began seeing more children talking online with adults they thought were their own age, Periachi said. They began seeing more children having online conversations with people they knew were adults, and the conversations quickly became sexual, he said. The ICAC officers also received more tips about adults viewing images of children being sexualized or being sexually abused, Periachi said. More people were on their computers between March and May when the tips about children being victimized ballooned to about 180 a month, up from 60, Periachi said. All right, and I'll, um, I'll link to the article below if you want to read additional stuff. But uh, this is a very common problem that's being um, broadcast uh, across the media. Um, ICAC units across the United States are always reporting this uptick and uh, the need for more personnel to investigate the number of crimes that are out there. For all those not familiar with the ICAC, they are a regional partnership between local authorities and federal and state agencies. Each works in independently, and they go after offenders. And I have to say, man, just welcome to the state of COVID-19. You know, this is where the excessive porn use is uh, taking people down a dark turn. I know about this dark turn because I've been there. I started this channel to help other porn addicts after the ICAC raided my house. I had downloaded a video of a teenager masturbating, and I've been paying the price ever since. I was arrested, my name was broadcast on the media outlets, and I was called a child pornography addict without any details of what I actually did. I lost my job and nearly my family. In the 12-step programs that I participate in, they call that the rock bottom, which is the wake-up call one needs to finally turn their life around. Had I not hit that wall, I would have never engaged in any recovery efforts as I was comfortable in my porn addiction. When I see this article, I see an echo of what I went through. Tens of thousands of men, likely stressed out of their minds or bored, probably doing the same dumb shit I did, going down a dark path on a file sharing network platform. This isn't the act of some new secret pedophile network. This is the actions of people going nuts and leaning on a vice. I know this because I'm taking on a record new number of sponsees in my 12-step programs, thanks in part to the isolation caused by COVID. I wanted to share something with you, the listening audience, that I share with the people I sponsor who end up in that dark place on the internet. First, you always have to acknowledge the addiction, and the harm. The addiction is the behavior that got you trapped, either in the endless loop of use or that got you in trouble. The second thing is acknowledging the harm. For many, this is actually the more difficult subject. Let me read to you some statements so that you can process them. So what if I downloaded images or videos of teens? I didn't make them. I didn't coerce anyone. I just downloaded stuff I found on the internet. What's the big deal? These girls post videos of themselves. All I did was watch. All three of those statements reflect the attitudes of men that can't see the harm in their actions. And it's something I hear from newcomers in my 12-step groups all the time. 
They could be dragged off by the police, have their lives destroyed, but they can't see the damage to others and their actions. All three statements obscure the fact that there are larger sociological and psychological harms in online sex than just the transaction of files between parties. As a widespread tool for public use, the internet is still relatively new, and most people engage it these days through smart devices. Now think about that. The first iPhone 2G was re released in 2007, and every single teenager you see likely has some sort of smart device now. Do you remember your teenage years? <laughs> I do, and thank God I didn't have an iPhone back then. Who knows how many pictures of my penis would be floating around the internet had that been the case. In our teenage years, our bodies grow into adults, but the brain is still not mature. Teens are more prone to making stupid and rash decisions, to acting impulsively and sometimes recklessly, as they haven't experienced real consequences to their life's actions. This is why laws create a seemingly arbitrary line between children and adults. Society is trying to protect the known complications of this stage of life. It rightfully treats those as not being fully competent of handling the rigors of adulthood. Teens with cell phones created a huge supply of sexually explicit material. They use online free available services to broadcast their content, and that content is, of course, collected and redistributed across the internet. When somebody says, so what if I downloaded images or videos of teens? I didn't make them. Well, what they're saying is true. A naive teenager created sexual content, likely seeking approval, attention, or simple sexual expression. But they haven't experienced any real consequences in their short lives. They likely didn't consider the prospects of having their content spread across the web, the prospects of being identified online, the prospects of being stalked or worse. That doesn't mean that the person downloading the content would necessarily try to interact with a teen or do any intentional harm. However, the act of downloading and sharing perpetuates the spread of the files to those who would. Simply downloading the file creates harm by perpetuating the use of a teen's body for sexual stimulation by others. That ignorant young person didn't understand the ramifications of what they did, and horny adults amplify the problem through file sharing. This is why the activity is considered child exploitation. A teenager is still a child, and they are naive and require guidance from elders, hence their protection under the law. The burden of being an adult means that we must comply with the law. And I'm sure this is pretty obvious to my listeners. You likely stop at the red light. You likely aren't robbing people or mugging old ladies in the park. But the internet isn't like real life. We don't have stop signs and posted speed limits. The government isn't posting warning signs on domain names. You have free reign to do whatever the hell you want and most likely under the cover of anonymity. And therein lies the problem. Internet users get lured into thinking they can do things without consequences. And I'm not talking about legal consequences here either. I'm talking about moral and ethical consequences as well. The most common problem I see in the internet usage is that the barometer for ethical behavior gets turned off or moved and replaced with impulsive action and groupthink. It shouldn't be a surprise that terrorist organizations and cults find ample picking on the internet where they can shape the thoughts and behaviors of people. Speaking of groupthink, the very nature of the porn industry is to recruit 18-year-olds as the fresh new face for sexual conquest. This isn't anything new. They've been doing this prior to the internet. At times, getting trouble for it too. And think about the marketing message for a second. What's being communicated? What's being communicated is that 18-year-olds are prime for sex. This industry is literally soliciting teenage girls for sex. It's all over their websites. Many of the plot devices in porn videos feature common themes, such as bad stepdaughters or innocent schoolgirls. And they get away with it because the actress is over the legal age, but the message is still communicating that teenage girls are for fucking. Say that sentence out loud 
and try thinking of someone that you care about that's maybe in that age group. Teenagers might be entering into a sexual maturity when they get into that range, but they're whole persons. They feel pain, remorse. They have lives that involve achievements and growth. They aren't just sex toys for your personal amusement. That should be obvious. But the nature of internet pornography has some way of subverting you, some way of subverting what you know and your ethical boundaries. They don't mind crossing that taboo line because it makes them money. And they really don't give a shit about the harms they're making that their their marketing causes. It's all part of how they promote themselves. You, as an adult, have to maintain your own civic, moral, and ethical boundaries, even when you're on that anonymous playground called the Internet. Every day I wake up dealing with the consequences of my actions. I'm on a sex offenders list because teen porn was on my porn menu. I should have never ordered off of that menu in the first place. In these COVID-19 times, I hope you find the strength and resolve to stay off that menu too. Sex feels good for a few passing moments. It's the consequences from our actions that can last a lifetime. This is Road to Recovery. Be safe. And please stay on that road to recovery.